Welcome to Statistics Made Simple and I am Savita Valsang. In this video, I will give an introduction to statistics and we will learn different concepts associated with it. The word statistics is derived from the Latin word status, Italian word statista or the German word statistic meaning political state. The father of statistics is Sir Ronald A. Fisher and the father of Indian statistics is P. C. Mahalanobis. He is also the founder of the Indian Statistical Institute. The word statistics is used in two senses. In the singular sense, it stands for the science of collection presentation, analysis and interpretation of numerical data. In the plural form, it stands for numerical facts. For example, the strength of a college is 3000. Now let's learn the different definitions with respect to the singular sense. Firstly, we have definition of statistics according to A. L. Bowley. It is defined as the science of counting or it is the science of averages. Then we have the definition of statistics according to A. L. Boddington. Statistics is a science of estimates and probabilities. And definition of statistics according to Croxton and Cowden. Statistics is a science of collection, presentation, analysis, interpretation of numerical data. These three definitions are very important and can be asked as one markers. Let us now learn the most important definition of statistics in the plural sense. This definition is given by Professor Horace Sechrist. Statistics may be defined as an aggregate of facts affected to a marked extent by a multiplicity of causes numerically expressed, enumerated or estimated according to a reasonable standard of accuracy collected in a systematic manner for a predetermined purpose and placed in relation to each other. Now based on Professor Horace Sechrist's definition, let us learn what are the features or characteristics of statistics. This again is an important question. So firstly, single or isolated items cannot be considered as statistics. That means they should be an aggregate of facts relating to a particular field of inquiry. For example, the height of an individual, the weight of a person, the price of a commodity cannot be considered as statistics as these figures are unrelated. Whereas figures of births, deaths, sales, production, purchase, profits, etc. over different places, times will constitute statistics. Statistics is affected by a multiplicity of causes. Facts or figures are affected by a number of factors or forces acting together. For example, the production of rice may be affected by a number of factors such as weather conditions, amount of fertilizer used, fertility of the soil, variety of seeds used, etc. Third, statistics is numerically expressed. That means only numerical data constitutes statistics. It means that the data or facts to constitute statistics must be capable of being expressed in some quantitative form as weights of 60, 70, 100 and 90 kgs or profits of rupees 10,000, rupees 20,000 etc. Thus, these data must contain numerical figures so that these may be called as numerical statements of facts. Statistics is enumerated or estimated. For getting a reasonable standard of accuracy, the field of inquiry should not be very large. If it is infinite or very large, even enumeration of data is impossible and reasonable standard of accuracy may not be achieved. 
so to achieve it we have to make an estimate according to a reasonable standard of accuracy depending upon the nature and purpose of collection of data for example we may measure the height of buildings in meters but we cannot measure the length of smaller objects like bricks in the same unit of measurement point data should be collected in a systematic manner another important characteristic of statistics is that the data should be collected in a systematic manner if the data is collected in a haphazard manner it will lead to difficulties in the process of analysis and wrong conclusions can be made so a proper plan should be made and trained investigator should be used to collect data so that they may collect statistics if it is not done in such cases reliability of data gets decreased so to get correct results the data must be collected in a precise manner sixth point data should be collected for a predetermined purpose so before we collect data we must be clear with the purpose for which we are collecting the data if we have no information about its purpose we may not be collecting the data according to the needs as an example if a person on government duty is counting the number of vehicles passing through a road in a unit time then it constitutes statistics but the same work done by any other person not related to this field is not statistics because the former is doing it for the government which wants to make it a four lane road if needed seventh point statistics should be placed in relation to each other that means statistical data are collected mostly for the purpose of comparison so for the purpose of comparison it is necessary that the data must be homogeneous now let's note it would be meaningless to compare the heights of students with heights of trees the statistical data are quantitative or numerical that is they can be counted measured compared analyzed and are used to draw conclusions and make wise decisions some branches of applied statistics are in biometry which is biostatistics which deals with problems in biology econometrics is a tool to prove or disprove the theories of economics demography is a study of human population then we have statistical quality control that is control quality of manufactured goods then actuarial science that is statistics in the field of insurance stylometry that is statistics used in literature and psychometry statistics used in psychology some more important concepts which you have to remember are functions of statistics it simplifies the complexity of the data or it reduces the bulk of data then it helps in comparison it also studies the extent of relationships it helps in the administration of the state by using statistics even trends and tendencies can be studied it helps in the formulation of problems and testing of hypotheses there are also some limitations of applied statistics it does not deal with individual items it deals with quantitative data and not qualitative data then statistical laws are always not exact they are true only on an average and statistical conclusions are also not always exact and skilled person should handle data otherwise it's liable to be misused in spite of the usefulness of statistics and the confidence of people in its efficacy some people have misgivings about it and they distrust it what are the causes of distrust of statistics one is figures can be easily believed ignoring the limitations of statistics misuse of the figures inadequate samples and lack of subject knowledge what are the remedies to remove distrust of statistics we should have a need of caution statistical limitation should be taken into consideration there should be self restraint 
statistics must be used only by experts and analytical study of data before its use. Let us now learn some of the basic concepts in statistics. A study of the various characteristics relating to the individuals or items belonging to a particular group is called as the statistical investigation or statistical survey. The group of individuals under study in a statistical investigation is known as the population or universe. So population is an aggregate of objects under study in any statistical investigation. Let's take a couple of examples. If we want to study the amount of expenditure incurred by families living in a city, then the population will consist of all households in that city. Similarly, if we want to study the quality of a manufactured product in an industrial concern during a day, then the population will consist of all the products manufactured on that day. The representative part of the population is called as the sample. The units in the sample must possess the characteristics of the units in the population. The number of units in the sample is called as the size of the sample or the sample size. For example, let the number of students in a college denote a population. Then the number of students who have opted for a particular combination can constitute a sample. Next, we have finite population. A population containing a countable number of objects or items is called as a finite population. Examples, population of a town, number of students in a college, number of items produced in a factory in a day. An infinite population, a population consisting of uncountable number of objects or items is called an infinite population. For example, number of stars in the sky, number of fishes in the ocean, number of trees in a forest. What is a quantitative characteristic? A characteristic which can be measured numerically and can be expressed in specific units of measurements is called a quantitative characteristic. For example, height of a person can be measured in centimeters, inches or feet. Weight of a person can be measured in kgs or pounds. The burning life of an electric bulb can be measured in hours. Length of a plant can be measured in inches, centimeters or feet. What is a qualitative characteristic? A characteristic which cannot be measured numerically and cannot be expressed in specific units of measurements is called a qualitative characteristic. Examples are color, beauty, honesty, poverty, success, intelligence, discipline, emotions, etc. The next definition is an important one that is a variable. A variable is a quantitative characteristic that varies from unit to unit. For example, height, weight, length, marks, age, etc. Now let us learn the two different types of variables. Firstly, we have discrete variable. A variable which assumes only specific values in a given range is called a discrete variable. Examples are number of accidents occurring at a junction every day, number of telephone calls received at an exchange per minute, number of children in a family. What is a continuous variable? A variable which assumes all possible values in a given range is called a continuous variable. For example, heights, weights, ages, etc. What is an attribute? An attribute is a qualitative characteristic that varies from person to person. Examples are honesty, poverty, success, intelligence, beauty, etc. I will now explain the scales of measurement of qualitative data. First, we have the nominal scale. A number assigned for every unit for identification of different categories is called a nominal scale. For example, roll numbers assigned to students. 
or let's take another example where an unemployed person is given the value 0 and an employed person has the value 1. Second, we have ordinal scale. Numbers assigned to observations that can be arranged in ascending or descending order is called as an ordinal scale. For example, ranks given to students according to their performance. Or in a shop, three varieties of rice are assigned 1, 2 and 3 according to their quality. I know you have heard it a thousand times before, but it's true, hard work pays off. If you want to be good, you have to practice, practice and practice. Thank you all for watching. Do understand the concepts that are explained in this video. It's a lengthy one, but a very useful one.